Somebody's talking, but I can't hear. Make sure your line is unmuted, guys. I'm unmuted. I'm muted. Hi, Trevor. Gary Smith with The Advocate. Just last, how frustrating was it for you guys to have a talk to you since the end of last season when you were on a roll to have the season end? And, and, and how, much do you, how much do you feel like there's going to be a carryover effect, effect this year from the success you were having last year? Right. So, I mean, last year, obviously, we started off pretty well. And... Um, I had a pretty good idea that we were going to be good. I mean, we were about to get tested in the, in the upcoming weeks. But um, really, it was just it was tough because the, the group that we had was so together and connected, like Coach Jewett talks about all the time. And unfortunately, we lost a couple of those key leaders in uh, Grant Matthews, Teagues, um, Huddy, and, and Ty. So those, those are obviously four, four people that are tough to replace. But... Um, for the guys that came back, um, we got to experience what it was like to play Division One baseball for most of the new guys. Um, like the the three starters that we had last year were all JUCO transfers. Um, myself, uh, I mean, just having that experience um, coming back this year, I think will we'll play a huge part in in how we uh, go about uh, this season. You stepped in the shoes of a high draft pick. Right, so um, I mean, coming in, I there there wasn't a bunch of expectation from me last year. I wouldn't say. I mean, obviously, I was there to to take his role. I mean, maybe not as significantly, but just to just try to fill the void and um, primarily defensively, from what I was told on, when I first got here. But then uh, the bats started to come around. Uh, kind of just proved to myself that I could could play at this level and. Um, I mean, it's just kind of crazy that all this is happening, to be honest. Uh, like you said, it's it's tough to um, to come into a situation like that. But for me, it's just there's not much pressure there, to be honest. It's just playing the game that I love and, and having fun with the, the guys that I do it with. How did you end up at Parkland College um, in the first place for, for Juco Ball? And, then, and, and, why did you, and what made you end up at Tulane? Right. So it's, it's actually kind of a crazy story. Uh, coming out of high school, I I was undersized, not not very highly recruited, um, and one of my my best friends from back home, Damian Pierce, was um, committed to Parkland, and I really had nowhere to go, and I just heard a, a lot of noise about the program and stuff like that, and I ended up calling the coach. It was like, yo, can I come try out? Um, went there, and and basically they told me that I had a spot after after what I was able to show them, and. Um, from there, the rest is pretty much history. Um, we had a good run my freshman year, which I think put a lot of our guys on the map and then and our team as as a whole for the following year. And then Tulane, I think, saw me play at Austin P in, in a showcase that we were in in the fall of my sophomore year. And then um, came down here on a visit, fell in love. Uh, I, t I tell the coaching staff all the time, I never really saw myself at a at a huge school, and and this place just happened to to be ideal. So, you, you were a four star, a, a four sport star in high school. You, 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 you even added golf. <laughs> right. How good a golfer are you? Uh, when I play a lot, I I can break eighty. We'll just say that. But uh, yeah. So I mean. Growing up, I played every sport possible, just just having fun. Uh, played football for a couple of years, and then realized I didn't like getting hit, so switched over to uh, to golf. And yeah, I mean it, that's a game you got to play a lot to be good. So right now, I'd probably shoot a hundred, but. And you were you were a shortstop like most the best players on teams usually are shortstops. How big of how, how much of an adjustment was it to, to to play third base last year? Seemed like you handled it pretty well. Right, so yeah, I played short my whole life. Nobody would let me play anywhere but there. And then um, when I got here, I knew that there was um, other guys that were going to be able to play. Um, so I started training a little bit to play third when I was at my JUCO. And I, I was like watching film on, on other guys, like big leaguers and stuff like that. 
and like studying the different techniques. And what I found for me is really just that I just play third like a, a shortstop, like I had my whole life. So, I mean, the transition was, was a little tough, but to be honest, I mean, field the ball, throw the ball, that's about all you can, all you can do. You mentioned the, the losses in the, in, in, the, in, in the lineup. I think if with all the pitchers returning, I think maybe one of the reasons Tulane didn't preseason top 25 in some of the rankings is because there's some doubts about the, the hitting lineup. Do you feel pretty good about the guys coming back, though, and, 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 and the new guys that are going to be in the lineup this year? Right, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously we lost a second rounder. That's huge. But, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of younger guys stepping up. I think that's – our inexperience is probably what's in question there, but um, yeah, I think there's dudes that that can hit top to bottom. I mean, we got guys that were splitting playing time last year, and Ethan Groff and, and Logan Stevens and people like that that are, are probably gonna play every day and have an impact for us. So, and then um, just we got a couple of transfers, a couple of freshmen that that can swing the bat too. So I'm just yeah, I'm excited, looking forward to it. I think we'll be all right. It was nitpicking, but I, I asked. I noticed. I don't even recall it from watching you last year. But you struck out 20 times, which was the most on the team. Um, obviously, your numbers were great overall. Is that something you're focusing on, and, and, and what 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 contributed to that? Uh, yes and no. I mean, part of what makes me a good hitter, in my opinion, is is my ability to to hit different pitches and and sometimes pitchers' pitches that that I shouldn't be hitting. So, I mean. Yeah, I'm sort of trying to control the strike zone a little better, but as a free swinger, it's just, um, just I don't know how to how to explain it, but kind of just dialing back what I go after and, and trying to do damage with pitches more than just put the ball in play, I should say. How quickly did you feel comfortable in your role last year? I know you had a home run at Cal Florida and you, you had an incredible series against Middle Tennessee um, a, a little later in the year. Right, so. The first game, I did, do not remember playing in at all. Um, and then and then once we got to Fullerton, um, I think that's when it, it became real for me. And I realized that, you know, I can I can actually play here. Um, and then, yeah, after that series, the, the ball just started looking huge and got a lot of confidence. And um, the swing just started to feel good. So I think um, it, it took me a, a while for sure. I mean, hitting off our guys in practice throughout the fall and and leading up to the season last year helped a lot. I mean, like uh, Coach Jewett was saying earlier, there, there is a transition period for hitters. And I think I think that's one thing. As I get more comfortable, uh, the strikeouts will lessen. And, and I'll, I mean, just learning as a hitter is the most important thing. And I'm still, I still got a long way to go on that side of the ball. I've always been a good defender, but I'm, I, I'm still learning how to hit, to be honest. So we'll see. So college hitters haven't been able to figure out Braden will off the ball. What, what was it like? What, how quickly, when you were in practice, did you realize how, how good this guy is? And what's it like trying to get hits off of him? Yeah, it, it's crazy, honestly. Um, I faced him, I want to say last week, and in my first at bat, and it was three pitches, K. And I'm, he threw me three different pitches. And I mean, against him, it's it's insane. So you're, you're really just trying to guess at, uh, at the end of the day. And if you get a knock off of him, you just, that's all you can ask for. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, he, he, like you saw last year, he's lights out. Um, it just there's a trust factor too when he's on the mound. Yeah, he can defend his position. You know he's gonna be around the zone all the time. Uh, it's just it's just very comforting knowing that that having somebody like that on a Friday night, you're gonna be in a lot of games. Even if you're not swinging it well offensively, that um, that he's gonna keep you in range and and allow you to, to try to win a game. Good, how are you? Uh, Coach talked a little bit about your uh, ability to run <laughs> and, and, and run the bases. So then I got to ask, how fast are you? Not that fast. <laughs> that, that, that's, I used to think I was fast until I got here. And uh, no, I mean, 
I would say I would say like 60 speed. I'm not that fast, but um, I, I definitely know how to run the bases. I mean, back in high school, we were super aggressive on the bases. Um, just instinct wise, knowing knowing the game, everything like that. I mean, it's just something I've done my whole life. Is just just run like crazy, and I think that's kind of what he's trying to say when he says I can run. It's not not so much that I, I fly or anything like that. It's just that I have pretty good instincts on the bases. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I need it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, Anything else, else for Travis? Travis? All right. We'll be right back in here shortly with Rachel. Cool. Thank you. Did I do all right? Trevor, you did great. <laughs> you did great.